I absolutely have my heart set on buying this car. The only thing that's stopping me from doing so is I literally don't have the money to buy it. But I would like to buy this car, I would like to add it to my little collection, I would like to cherish it, I would like to enjoy it, and I would like to save it for the future. <laughs> This car known as Alfred, which is mine, is going on the back of my truck today and I'm going to be transporting it to a place called Scunthorpe where a man named Peter, who has a car called Project Dan, will be doing some restoration work upon it. And whilst in Scunthorpe, I shall be going and collecting another car and bringing it back here, of course. Never was a little froggy, I'd eat myself some cheese. Even though little froggies, they do not even eat cheese. finally back and here is the car it's almost completely dark so you can't see too well it's a Rover 25 on oh, no, no fire plate and it's going to be called Brian Brian Johnson <laughs> Hello, introducing Project Brian Johnson. Absolutely named because of BJ. That's its initials. It is a Rover 25 GSI. Yes, GSI. Look inside, we see leather interior and rear electric windows. Again, just like Boris Johnson had. Inside we have vents that aren't actually broken. Quite a bit of petrol. Just over a hundred thousand miles and the best bit is... Ready? Look. Headlining. Headlining not sagging. Oh, that's a joy to see. Oh, it's a bit there actually. Just a bit there and a bit there. I think that's where they start, where they get the most sunlight. The car is, of course, silver, five door. If you really know your Rovers, you may spot that it has the incorrect wheels. These are the 15 inch rather than the 16, like I have on Nigel. But excellent tyres all round. One minor bit of damage here so far, where I believe a courier driver didn't see it. On the passenger seat here we have a Rimmer Brothers catalogue which is 12 years out of date. I bet the prices have gone up a bit since then. And rather kindly, a box full of bits including a spare headlamp. Presumably because the headlamp on the passenger side is just a bit cloudy. The only thing is, uh, this one's even worse. But that's not a problem. I can polish that back to life. As you saw, I've only just got this car off the back of the truck. So, should we have a look in the boot? Ah oh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, there's no there's no button to open the boot, is there? You've got to do it with fob. That means that this has to work. Oh, and it does. That's good. Oh, uh, right. Uh, some tyres. Gosh, that's, that's a bit meaty, that one. Wow, that's interesting. Looks like we have some genuine Rover floor mats as well here. And there we have the engine bay, where all the oily bits belong. And they are oily. They always are. When do you ever see a K-Series without a leaky rocker cover? 
well, mine should be okay. There we see the Rover 25 with the bonnet open, which is very natural. And very good because it opens, unlike the silver car parked over there. And this is where we get to the point of why this car is here in the first place. Yeah, it doesn't work. That's the only reason it's here. Because the chap who owned it liked it, wanted to drive it, but it just stopped working on him. And then something else happened. He got it fixed and it stopped working on him. Not my experience with Rovers at all, but it is with many other people. But the thing is, can I get it going? Well, there is a possibility I may have just spotted the problem straight away. This earth cable here, that's it was just about to snap off on the end of there so it wouldn't really be making particularly good connection this bit of earth cable there has clearly had a bit of water getting into it because it's quite dusty on the inside so ugh, this kind of oh yeah, it's gone very thin on the end of there. That was attached to a lug, and then the lug snapped off. Well, the lug hasn't snapped off, but the cable snapped just in there. So I'm going to bung that in there. Oh, I tell you what, we need a bit more cable off of that, I reckon. Yes, I bung that in there, solder it on, and then got another bit of soldering to do, and then I've got to drill a hole because a bolt snapped off because of rust and then I'll stick it all back together and see what happens. Started recording again all by itself. I wish there was a way you could just stop it as well. You can start it by doing that but you can't stop it by doing that or that or that. Drill out time. Got to drill a hole in the cross member. This is clearly not going to work with these wires snapped off. So, simple solution. New crimps on there, or lugs or whatever you want to call them. Bit of soldering, bit of grabbing. And then of course, the bolt that holds it on to the cross member snapped, as they always do. So, solution, drill a new hole. Drill a new hole, grind the paint off so you can make a good connection. Nut and bolt it, stick it all back together, put the battery back on and Yay! I did a fix. I did a fix. I did a fix. I fixed the car. I fixed the car right now. I did a fix. For all the failures and cock ups and misadventure that I seem to have had recently, that is the tonic I need. Maybe I am enjoying this too much, but to actually see something, fix it, and start it and it work really does make me happy indeed. At last, a success. It works. All the lights work, it drives, no clonks and knocks anywhere. It's not the quietest of engines, but it's fine. Even the rear electric windows work as well. Probably going to give this car a bit of a clean up now. And then, you know, when I'm ready, it can go for an MLT. These wheels are filthy. That's really grotty. Well, not overly impressed by this stuff so far. I've already used nearly half a bottle, and I've got those wheels on that half clean rather than completely clean. That's put me on trigger thing as well because the other one didn't work. Quick wash over, look at that. The paint's popping. That actually looks quite nice. Just with a quick wash. 
need to clean these wheels a bit more though like a river of blood running off of the wheels this stuff just is really good enough to get on off that proper caked on stuff I think this is good for wheels that aren't really that dirty so for wheels that have been neglected for years back to the hydrochloric acid. I think it's fair to say I've had a good first day on this car. take it puts MOT today so fairly sure there's nothing wrong with it but I should do a few more checks that works checky front end I'm quite confident actually. It's got power steering fluid, it's got coolant, even the brake fluid is new. Yeah, that's good. Just testing the fan works on the front. You can do that by unplugging this. Let me show you. You see that there? If you unplug it, the fan will come on with the ignition. It's quite quite useful to know can be quite useful can be difficult to get back on can be dangerous to do it while the engines on well I was feeling super confident about this car and its MLT up until I started it up and then it started chucking out blue smoke uh, so um, I did think that's maybe because I've tricked the electric fans are coming on or it could just be more likely that it's been stood a while probably that just letting it warm up just waiting for that fan to kick in by itself to make sure it doesn't have any overheating issues as I mentioned earlier on before, this stuff, Wonder Wheels, has disappointed me somewhat. I think it would work okay on wheels that you keep clean, but wheels that haven't been kept clean, it doesn't really work. So I need to go and get some more hydrochloric acid, which does work. There, that's the stuff. See what a bit of the spilt stuff does on the floor, on the dirty floor. It bubbles up and eats away at the dirt. And now, with a toothbrush, I can just give this a clean. I'll have to clean this quite thoroughly before I put it back in the bathroom. Here's the choice then. 600 millilitres of this stuff for £5. And it doesn't really work, and I've used half of it. Or £5.70 for 5 litres of this and the trigger bottle. And as you can see, it does work. <laughs> despoiled Rover 25 does it look good or not certainly from this angle it looks like a Citroen Zara Picasso this one's broken you see there with a little bit of rewiring in the boot loom from the senior mustard the brake light is now working The job done making it MOT ready. So that is all of the suspension looked at, checked for corrosion and uh, brakes, all this sort of stuff. Uh, so the emissions, don't know about that, maybe it'll be okay, maybe it won't. But that 
eye level brake light so obviously that has to be working in order to have an MOT on it and now it is so that's interesting bit of broken wire stopped it from starting and then another bit of broken wire would have stopped it from getting an MOT hopefully I'll be able to get it done when we get back well this might be the end of today actually which is a pity really but they don't seem to have any slots available for MOT next door but I was going to polish the headlamp as well but I'm not doing it this not that no There we are at the end of the video for today, which is on one half a complete success and on the other half a slight failure. Why is that then? Well, I'll tell you, Brucey, because the car is ready to go for MOT and hopefully pass. Only one thing concerns me, and that is the emissions. But besides that, it all seems to be a very nice, solid car. But because of that eye-level brake light taking up a bit of time before, it meant I couldn't get the car in earlier on. And by the time I could do, there wasn't time to do it. That means tomorrow may be the day that Brian gets its new MLT. Or maybe not. It rather depends on how they think he is. Brian Johnson's MLT day. One thing that concerns me ever so slightly about Brian there is uh, the headlamps. Yep. They could do with being polished up. They're okay, but I'd like them to look new. And can I do that? And also, once I've done that, I should do Bolty's car as well. Because uh, I said I would do. But I still haven't got the bonnet open, and I have tried a few times. That needs fixing properly, I reckon. That one's okay, more or less. This one's not great. It's passable, but you know. Remember what that looks like now, because quite soon it will look a bit different. So, MOT for Project Brian Johnson. So what I've done this morning is get the car nice and warm, get rid of some of that original startup smoke, which I believe will still have something to do with it being stood for quite a while and it needs a jolly good run. That, get the engine warmed up, and then polish the headlamp. Yeah, see the passenger side headlamp there? Quite cloudy. And although it's still up to standard, just about, um, it does want to be nice and clear. So that's what I'm doing right now. Having done that, I thought I may as well do the driver side lamp as well. And now, as you can see, that they're both quite clear. And of course, Brian got a pass on his MOT, which is the news I was expecting. Right, so I've just moved Brian over here next to Boaty's boat just so I can take a picture because they're both silver cars. Exciting, eh? Now I'm going to put it back. My plan for this car next then is going to be to use it. Yep, as for next month. I shall tax it and run it around for the whole month, um, at least until I know for certain that the car is good. Well, actually, I already know it's good. It's got a new MOT. It's completely solid underneath. Everything's good about it. It's a good little silver Rover 25. A lovely little Rover 25 that anybody would be proud to have, so long as they wanted one, that is. What I actually mean is uh, just run it around Make sure there's nothing just about to go wrong with it or anything like that. Well, 
what could go wrong? It's not going to fall apart, is it? And the tyres aren't going to suddenly go bald. But I do need to check over the engine because that's the bit that you know I worry about with any car. I sell a car on, and then I worry about whether it's a good car for that person or not. Gosh, that was a bit waffly. But what I actually mean is that if I do 500 miles in this car without any issues, if that smoky stuff goes away, then I'll be happy that I can sell it on knowing it's a good car. And I can ask a decent, honest price for it that will keep Project Nigel Land in business. Yep, Brian Johnson. Uh, I've just filled in the V5. I've got to it the other day, which is fine because it's not been on the road or anything like that. So, filled it in in my name. But I was tempted, very tempted in fact, to fill it in as Captain Mustard. Would they have actually sent it? Would they say, we can't do that. Nobody's called Captain Mustard. Or, maybe they are. Maybe they're not obliged to question anything whatsoever. I'm not being very brave. It's a car that I need to have the V5 for, so I didn't want to do anything too stupid.